Hello and welcome on the Watches TV for this new birthday party. And today is actually my real birthday, but that doesn't change much. I will still have many more coming. So we are about to unbox uh, together yet another interesting and pretty crazy timepiece with the MBNF HM7 Final Edition. This is naturally a limited edition, but before jumping into some proper unboxing, uh, let me just remind that in a certain way, all MBNF watches are limited editions, not necessarily per se, meaning 25 editions of this or 50 of that, but by nature, every single collection of MBNF is limited since they will at one moment or another stop producing uh, each collection, even if they have a collection that is working pretty well. And by uh, saying pretty well, I don't mean producing them in the thousands. We are talking small uh, production volumes. Well, at one point, MBNF will stop it. I mean, it re it's reinforcing on one side this image of continuous creativity, and on the other side, as a customer, you are in a certain way guaranteed of buying something pretty special, pretty unique, regardless if it's actually a true limited edition or no ordinary model within a collection. So all this to tell you that today we are precisely unboxing the final edition of the HM7 Aquapod, the horological machine number seven. So off we go for some nice present unwrapping. And as you can see, the box is big. And it's not yet finished. Well, first we have a pretty serious foam protection and uh, I will open it now. As you can see, here is some other things that we're gonna discover together. Well, first of all, you can see that here we have an operating manual on one side and you have actually two uh, extra rubber straps, a black and a, a white one that are uh, within the box, foam box. Okay, so let's now discover the actual watch box itself and uh, as you can see, MBNF's creativity uh, never only stopped at the timepiece level. Uh, the actual boxes are all uh, specially designed for each collection or even sometimes for each limited edition in this collection. And when you buy something at this price level, well, I think it's pretty simply just coherent in a market respect for you, the customer. So in this case, uh, we have more of a like, kind of a flying uh, saucer type of box. And just the object is cool. I mean, it's nice to look at and can clearly stand nicely on your desk, I think. Okay, now with my gloves on, I will open it and discover this uh, special version of the HM7 model. Uh, when the HM7 came out a couple of years ago, I can clearly remember people uh, going a bit like, what the beep is this crazy machine? And uh, of course, naturally, I mean, MBNF had already accustomed uh, to this kind of what the beep category of pretty crazy design watches, or let's say daring or ballsy designs. Uh, but what struck the most was the actual size of the machine. It's spectacular width. It's 53.8 uh, millimeter. Uh, yeah, that you heard me, it's almost 54. Uh, but there is of course much more than, the, than this. So this watch was MBNF uh, first uh, slightly sport inspired watch, but uh, just to be clear, and despite the analogy uh, with diving watches with this uh, turning bezel, this is no diver's watch. It's water resistant to 50 meter and that's it. Okay, and as its uh, name implies, the aquapod, the link with water, sea, ocean, uh, you name it, is of course quite evident. But MBNF never claimed they produced a diver's watch, more a watch inspired by jellyfish, uh, in fact, especially when you look at it on this side. Okay, let's now uh, be a bit more technical and let's talk engine first. So this watch holds a movement developed in-house by MBNF and the main characteristic is this uh, central flying tourbillon rotating on itself in 60 seconds, which is clearly put uh, on display under this rather spectacular uh, dome sapphire crystal. And since we are talking sapphire and tourbillon, well, one of the difference uh, with, with previous uh, models of the HM7 is that you will find one of the design signature of MBNF with this reference to Grandizer or Goldorak in French with the Asteroa shape and this word I have simply no idea how it's called in English. Well now this shape found around the flying tourbillon is made out of sapphire compared to titanium previously. So this kind of uh, stacked movement architecture is something now dear to the brand and in this case uh, this movement is made out of uh, 303 components but just uh, uh, as I mentioned the only real visible part uh, is this uh, tourbillon as the rest of the movement is kind of hidden under the titanium hour and minute rings that are rotating uh, around it. 
Well, uh, actually the time indication on this final uh, edition represents its most significant difference with previous model of the HM7. Here numbers have this uh, 3D effect being welded onto uh, rings and on previous models the numbers were painted on some kind of flat disc if I can say so. And now with uh, well, this kind of uh, floating number it gives a bit more depth to the entire machine. I like it better and actually these numbers are filled with superluminova and they glow pretty nicely in the dark. So to read uh, the time you just have to look at the vertical alignment uh, found at 6 o'clock, meaning the position, I mean, kind of logically uh, that you are facing when you wear it. And uh, uh, you will have uh, trailing hours on the bottom disc or bottom ring and uh, instant jumping minutes on the uh, upper disc. And if you want to see uh, the second well, you can actually follow the, the, the tourbillon since it's a 60 seconds uh, tourbillon. But I mean, this is seriously not the purpose of this watch. So the other main difference uh, of this version comes uh, is the fact that it comes in a platinum Whereas previous versions were made in titanium with a blue or green bezel and a red gold case version with black bezel. So this is a self-winding timepiece and one of the very cool features is actually the rotor uh, found on the back case side. Uh, see how cool this is. Uh, and you just want to look at it and play with it. Uh, well, at least I do. And on this side too, well, you have this uh, kind of uh, domed sapphire question of design coherence and reinforces this uh, jellyfish uh, uh, idea, especially with these uh, movable lugs uh, that uh, helps, uh, helps it you know, fit rather nicely on any wrist. So despite uh, being automatic with a power reserve of 72 hours, you can still wind it up uh, manually and uh, to do so you use the crown uh, found at uh, 9 o'clock and the other crown found at 3 is for time setting. Again, more of a design balance uh, uh, for the overall uh, timepiece, uh, even though it's I mean, kind of crazy enough. Like I mentioned before, you do have a uni unidirectional uh, bezel. The feeling is uh, pretty nice. Uh, and it's not every day that you can grab a bezel with your entire hand. I mean, you know, that's for sure. Okay, here too, the numbers uh, are filled with superluminova and glow in the dark. Uh, but the fact of having this kind of uh, Saturn ring bezel slash bezel floating uh, around the central horological part uh, makes this watch feel a little bit less big than uh, what it is really. I mean, okay, we're still talking 54 uh, millimeter, uh, so it is not small, uh, I, I concur. But nevertheless, it makes it a little bit more compact. Okay, so this watch is actually being launched uh, today and it's limited to 25 pieces only. It's obviously a pretty daring piece uh, to wear. But if you want to stand out, well, this is definitely an option and a nice way to close the HM7 collection. So a great happy birthday to all and a massive Viva watchmaking too. All the best, see you real soon and thanks for watching.